What's up guys? In this video, what we're going to be doing is repairing a Danfoss VLT series drive. Uh, this drive in particular has a display that is not working correctly. You would think that the problem typically would be just the display itself. However, this particular drive it is not. I've already tried replacing the display with a new one and the display did not light up. So the next step in that process is I've got to replace the control board that is behind the display. That is what the display plugs into. So that's what we're going to do in this video. First step is always to lock and tag out the equipment make sure that there is no power source and uh, you know just make sure that you're safe. So that's what we're going to do first. Now that we have got the power turned off we're going to remove this front cover. You can see that there's a total of six screws that hold this front cover in place and uh, once we get those removed this cover itself should come off. Now that we've got our cover off what we're going to do now is going to uh, just verify that we do not have any voltage anywhere on this. We will then unplug all of the terminal strips which it's a very simple process. You just literally can grip them and they will just unplug. It makes rewiring everything much easier. And of course we do need to release these clips to where it uh, is holding the wiring. That way you kind of have more room to work with. You can see here, just press in on those just like that. And you can move your wiring out of the way. Okay, you can remove this uh, display set it out of your way and just continue the process of taking this apart to get into that control board. The way that you remove your housing for your display is you squeeze top and bottom there's these clips and once you squeeze those you are able to pull it out. Check your pins on the back of this housing just to make sure that none of them are bent which uh, you know none of them are on this particular unit so we'll just set that out of the way and what we will do now is continue to remove clips and everything to get this control board out of the way. You can see here I do have a couple of screws that I will need to remove and that's going to be the next step in the process. To get access to the control board you've got these screws here. You can see one of them there and you're, you're going to notice them in a couple of places on this. You've got to remove each of these screws in order to be able to remove this housing and then to be able to get access to that parameter board. As you're working through this, you're gonna notice there is a little black cover that sets in here, and you've got two screws that are kind of hidden behind it, and that is part of what is holding this housing together. Uh, you know, I think that Danfoss could have done a little bit better job at that, but there again, it's Danfoss, so we get what we get. Uh, so the next step is I'm going to go ahead and remove these two screws. There's also a couple of clips that you'll have to loosen and be able to pull the remaining portion of this cage away from the drive. Okay, I have got those other screws removed and now it is just a process of getting it unplugged from the firing board, getting everything moved out of the way. So you want to be very gentle and once you get it loosened up, it will simply unplug and you can see we now have the control board removed and I just need to simply remove it from this housing and install the new one. Here is the old board compared to the new one. Just go over it make sure that there's not any jumpers or anything that are in the incorrect position and we're going to be putting it back into that housing and then reinstalling the housing on the drive. Now I have got the new board installed on into the cage uh, there is something I wanted to point out to you you see this little slot that I have kind of in the center of the screen what that is basically there's two of those there's one there and then there is one there what those are they're basically like a blade connector as you can see here and that is intended to help hold the board onto the cage Okay, until you get all of your screws and everything put back in. You know, you want to make sure that you're careful about reinstalling those. Make sure that it slips down into those properly. And uh, because, you know, it, you're going to be fighting with it for a bit until you get that lined up properly. You don't want to bend anything on that board. So just take a little extra precaution. Currently we have this back together. And we're going to begin the process of reinstalling it onto the drive. 
Okay guys, we are making progress on getting this back together. Make sure that you're careful when you press the board back into the board that's behind it. You know, you have something that you gotta be very careful of. You don't wanna damage any of those pins or anything. It's kinda hard to see on the video, but uh, you know, there is that plug that is back behind that. Uh, and again, we have uh, got this portion reinstalled and I'm just continuing getting everything back together. I've got the lower portion here that I still got to install that uh, has the clips that holds the harnesses. And once we do that, we will be able to put the display panel back on, just put everything back together. Now, one thing that you will have to do when installing this board, you're gonna have to recommission the drive, okay? If you have your program backed up on the touch panel, then you should be able to download the program from your touch panel into the drive if uh, you know if you have been making a, a habit of saving your parameters which i strongly recommend you do but for now we're simply going to continue we're going to get this lower portion pack together and continue the process okay guys we have got the new board installed we have our connections made we have all of our wire clips and everything reinstalled as well uh, there again guys, it's just a lot of little screws, a lot of little pieces that you've got to go through and be careful with. And the next part of this project is simply to put our cover back on, power it up, and see if we get the proper display. I do have a new display as well, and then hopefully we will be able to get this drive back online. Okay guys, we have now got the work finished. We've got the board installed, and as you can see, we do have this display working. We are back online, and uh, the motor is spinning. But guys, hope you liked the video. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Check out all the links down in the description. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and we'll see you next time.